Welcome to Sky Television. February 5th, 1989, the dawn of television's new age. And the most dramatic innovation in broadcasting since the launch of commercial television in Britain more than three decades ago. This is a television revolution. A revolution in quality entertainment. A revolution in choice. Now in one stroke, Sky Television more than doubles the programs on offer to you. And it's quality all the way. Sky Television lives off with four new channels. And there are two more still to come. Sky Channel, the pioneer is bigger and better than ever. Join me on Sky Channel. More than 40 hours a week of brand new programs produced exclusively for Sky. Don't miss it. Sky News, for the first time you'll have round the clock access to news and information. The wreckage of British Midland Flight VD92. From the world's newest purpose built newsroom in London, Sky News, 24 hours a day. Sports fans will be on the ball with Eurosport. Our historic joint venture with the European Broadcasting Union. We could have a new world champion. All the sports live from around the world. Sky Movies, hundreds of first blockbusters for the best in film entertainment. The film world's hottest stars. More than 30 new titles every month. In our first year, 400 films never seen before on ITV or BBC. And that's the truth. And still to come in 1989, Sky Arts. Plus, the ultimate in family entertainment, introducing the Disney Channel. That's six top quality television channels. That's the Sky Television Revolution. Now, that's what we call choice. Let the revolution begin. These are the rockets that are launching a revolution. minutes past midnight British summer time, the 12th of July, 1962. And now there are 20 seconds to go before Telstar should come into orbit. This is the start of the Telstar first revolution, is. as these television this pictures are bounced across the Atlantic. And it is hoped tonight there's a tuning signal appearing there. Clear as a bell indeed, clear as a bell. The start of a new age where satellites flash news around the world in seconds. Satellites united the world, helping rock stars raise millions for the starving in Ethiopia. But although technology marched ahead, the number of television channels which viewers could receive was still limited to a handful. And it's quite obvious that there are many evenings, in spite of the quality of television they provide, when one would rather watch the spin dryer. I think I share the same taste as the majority of people in this country, and I don't think we get enough of what we're all truly looking for. Very often it's hard to find any programme that's interesting. Sky plans to change all that. We're at the start of another technical revolution. Programmes are made here in Austerley, West London, then transmitted to you at home via satellite. You can receive up to a dozen other channels just by flicking through the control box on top of your television set. But how can all this happen? Where do the pictures come from? And why can a small dish in the garden or on the roof offer so much extra choice? Well, our story starts in the South American jungle.
Europeans along this river were adventurers in search of El Dorado, the lost city of gold. A few of them did survive the trip, but most were swallowed up by the jungle, victims of disease, wild animals, and even cannibals. As you can see, much of French Guiana remains untamed, but man does still come here, this time to explore a new frontier. French Guiana doesn't look quite the place for spectacular breakthroughs in space technology. But this tropical outpost next to the equator is now the focus of the European Space Agency's ambitions to be a front runner in the space race. The Ariane 4 is bigger and more powerful than before, able to carry two satellites into space. December 11th, 1988, take off for the TV revolution and the end of the BBC and ITV's unchallenged control of the programme schedules. We as government can't stop the satellites being launched. We wouldn't want to stop them. Uh, but that means that uh, whether BBC and ITV like it or not, there are going to be a lot more television channels available in this country but beam down from the sky. Now, that's a new revolution in broadcasting that the BBC and ITV companies have got to live with, just as we, the government, have got to live with it. Even before satellite, the broadcasting establishment was under fire from Westminster, accused of restrictive practices and inefficiency. And then came this the government's blueprint for a new competitive industry that claimed to put the viewer first. It's wonderful that now, but amazing that how much later it is, that the British people are at last going to be allowed to see more than four channels. This is a scandal. But for all these years, whereas in other countries there are eight, nine, ten channels, and in some twenty channels, we've been limited by this monopoly and by these greedy people uh, to only four channels. What, what I am actually excited about is the fact that people are going to be given a much wider choice of what they want to watch. And, and that is something that I am looking forward to greatly. Mrs Thatcher gave Satellite TV her blessing when she visited the Astra Satellite HQ in Luxembourg. She saw for herself the technology that would triple programme choice in Britain almost overnight. But why is the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg leading the way in satellite TV technology? This historic corner of Europe seems quaint, tranquil, old-fashioned, hardly revolutionary. But Luxembourg has been an international broadcaster for more than 50 years, breaking down European barriers to broadcast radio to Britain. Three generations of British teenagers have grown up to the beat of pop music, broadcast from Luxembourg. Our programs commence in just a moment, and they'll continue until 3 a.m. in the United Kingdom. We hope you'll stay with us, because Radio Luxembourg rocks Great Britain. Great Britain. Great Britain. Commercial radio making a big impression on Britain. Could satellite TV be even more successful? Just you and me in the radio, and me, you, and Radio Luxembourg keeping us both entertained, and me, hey, is the alarm. Inspired by the success of Radio Luxembourg, the government here decided to gamble on a far richer prize. It brought together investors for Europe's first privately owned TV satellite. The stakes were very high. Luxembourg itself invested £30 million of taxpayers' money in a scheme its critics said could never succeed. In the early days, it was considered totally impossible. It was uh, anathema to a lot of people around Europe and um, governments and industry and investors all said it was totally impossible. Every single financial, commercial, technical, regulatory, legal aspect of Astra was considered a non-starter. But Astra has proved them all wrong. The company built Europe's first direct-to-home satellite, controlled from a multi-million pound centre. Display RCS on Ramtech console. Roger. Around the clock, Astra is monitored in orbit, 23,000 miles above the Earth. 
Down below, more than a hundred million homes have the choice of up to 16 new channels. After the break, the Lake District Village without television. Dolly's doing it tonight on Sky Channel. It's an hour of sparkling entertainment that includes a host of special surprise guests. So join the stars and catch the magic of Dolly on Sky Channel tonight at 6.30. It all started when Mr. Roberts came home with a new Videomatic camera to number 14. An Amstrad Fidelity production starring Mrs. Roberts. Ready when you are, Mr. DeMille. And their mysterious daughter, Mandy. Oh, I hate being filmed. Ronnie Roberts as the midfield general. <laughs> Sorry. And introducing the happy feet of young Jennifer Roberts. Gasp at the amazing costumes! I'll just wait till we're on holiday. And laugh at it all instantly on the privacy of your own TV. The Videomatic from Amstrad Fidelity. The whole shooting match for just £499. If you clean your bathroom with a product that's too harsh, this is what might happen. Jif. Jif is different. Jif lifts even tough dirt and leaves surfaces feeling like new. Jif. Jif, with the power to clean right through to the shine. Jif. Tonight, check out the craziest kid around, superstar Michael J. Fox. He's not a normal boy. You better believe it. Oh, brother. Fun with Family Ties, tonight, 7.30 on Sky Channel. The Lake District, home of Wordsworth, one of Britain's finest poets. This landscape inspired some of his greatest works. But before satellite TV, that most popular form of 20th century entertainment, television, barely existed. This spectacular Lake District scenery attracts two million visitors every year. But unfortunately, these beautiful hills also caused a major problem for locals here. It meant it was almost impossible to get a decent TV signal. In an age when most British homes have two TV sets, Patterdale was pushed to receive any signal at all. What do you mean? Listen a minute, it's wonderful. It's not wonderful. You'll never get nowhere unless you finish school. Yes, last night there was nothing again. And uh, in the last few weeks it's deteriorated tremendously, but we have got something sometimes, whereas other people have got nothing. These pictures are received via a primitive cable system, but that is old and would be expensive to replace. 
So the village's television committee met recently to wind it up. That would have meant no TV at all in Patterdale. People can either go their own way and see how they want to get television because, uh, as you know, there are satellites now. Uh, but don't give you uh, BBC One, BBC Two, ITV or Channel Four. After the bad news, the locals met in the nearby pub. What's left of their TV picture, making its last valiant efforts before the plug is finally pulled. When you think about it, a few years ago, it was everybody expected to have a radio. Well, nowadays, it's, it's a television. It's a basic human right, like electricity or, or water, running water. I feel deprived, a second-class citizen, in fact. But it's not just the locals who are angry. The village hotel owner says tourists can't bear life without TV. Well, it's a disaster for us. Um, last year, we, um, well, over the last three years, we spent a quarter million pounds on updating all the rooms. All the rooms have private facilities, and we can't get television in the lounge. So I lost the contract. That was one of the main reasons why I lost the contract from, from a company who I've been dealing with for 30 years. But while Patterdale had nothing, some parts of Britain had cable TV and a choice of 12 or more channels. And where viewers had more choice, more of them watched Sky Channel than either BBC Two or Channel Four. With the current programming on the other four channels, the main network channels, there's a, a lack of variation, there's a lack of innovation, and it's quite repetitive. What cable has done for us anyway is provided us with an alternative. But will countless channels offering limitless choice mean poorer programming? Could expensive, well-made drama series no longer be affordable, watchable television? Sherlock Holmes is cheerful, so Sherlock Holmes must have a case. The ITV companies complain the government's plan to rewrite the rule book could be a death sentence for high-quality drama, like Granada's big overseas earner, Sherlock Holmes. Expensive sets like this Baker Street reconstruction would be a museum piece while second-rate rubbish clogged the airwaves. Uh, all I'm saying is that uh, although at the one end of it we have the most successful rating show in Coronation Street, been there for quite a long time and will stay there for quite a long time. We've also made programs which um, don't have that appeal to majorities. Those are the programs that are at risk. Why will Sky be better then? Well, we're going to bring in uh, the skills, techniques of people all over the world as well as the best of British uh, and we're going to try to be better but we're sure going to give people a choice. I'd like to see it a bit more defined. How much is going to be spent on it? I happen to know that uh, certain types of programmes do cost a little more than the sort of monies that I expect are going to be spent on uh, satellite services in the early days. Another critic of the new age of broadcasting, Shadow Home Secretary Roy Hattersley. Six, five. But today he's the star attraction at a low-budget cable channel, which grew from America's multiple-choice system. It broadcasts just politics 24 hours a day. And I think by and large, most politicians in Western democracies struggle to tell the truth whenever they can. And the viewers can even phone in to put politicians in the hot seat. Next call, Carson City, Nevada. Go ahead, please. Hello, uh, I want to uh, congratulate you on this uh, discussion with our, our Labour Party guest. But with his background, he seems to be more of a, of a Tory, of a Conservative than a Labour Party rep. C-SPAN is so small, the MD doubles as the anchorman, broadcasting to 24 million viewers. During this live broadcast from Westminster, one of them corrected Mr. Hattersley on the history of Big Ben. Big Ben was named after Sir Benjamin Hall, who was the first commissioner of works. Uh, I, I am utterly humiliated that that information comes to me from, I don't know how many thousand miles away, the far west coast. I feel utterly squashed. Thank you very much indeed. British. Still, Mr. Hattersley didn't regret his appearance on alternative television. I enjoyed it enormously. Yes, it became a conversation. It became me talking to people after about ten minutes, and I enjoy doing that. Well, in, in the United States, sometimes they call it talking head television. To those people who we call our C-SPAN junkies, it's a way of life. It's a way of being plugged in all the time to the political system in the United States. I think a lot of people would push that knob. I mean, some people would push the all-day sports knob. 
And I suppose some people will push whatever knob they think produces soft pornography. But I think there are enough people to justify it, yes. By signing up big-name broadcasters and being the first to transmit from the skies above Europe, Astra claims it's the hot bird. That's space jargon for the satellite that most viewers will be tuning into. But that claim was just the first shot of a war in space for satellite viewers. Sky and British satellite broadcasting are already battling it out, but will it be a fight to the death? I think that uh, there will be one winner and there will be uh, a loser or maybe just, you know, hanging on there, but there will be one outright winner. And how long do you think that will take? To declare itself. I think the signs will come over the first couple of years, perhaps, uh, but the play will not be ended. You know, that, 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 that declaration will probably be, I don't know, three or four years. Who's going to win? Well. Let's wait and see. Well, I don't agree with him. I think there's plenty of room for all of us and for more. Uh, some may fail, some channels may work, some may not. Uh, but there's certainly room for a lot more than one or two or three. After the break, heading for the year 2000. Television not quite what we're used to. Commencing tonight. From the powerful bestseller comes Spearfield's Daughter. The story of an Australian-born journalist whose career takes her through the horrors of the Vietnam War, the terror of Northern Ireland, the sun-drenched beaches of Australia, the glitter of New York, and the opulence of English society. Christopher Plummer and Kim Braden in a story of power and passion. Spearfield's Daughter, commencing on Sky Channel tonight at 8.30. This week, The Sun serializes an incredible work of fiction. A violent kidnap on a lonely Spanish road. The gang, a desperate group of terrorists. The victim, a future Queen of England. Read the blockbusting book that tells the terrifying story of a royal kidnap. Princess, exclusive in The Sun. Plus, The Sun Spring Catalog. Get it free. High fashions, low prices. Amazing savings for him, for her, for the home. Plus, a stylish free gift with every order. It's all in The Sun this week. Come home to Britain's brightest talent show, Star Search, with Keith Chegwick. We've got singers, musicians, comedians, groups, you name it, we've got it here. Star Search, only on Sky Channel, weeknights at 6. Tonight at 6.30, Dolly's doing it in a special hour of entertainment. Catch the Dolly magic right here on Sky Channel.